2016 Toyota Camry. I'm going to be doing the water pump on this one here. Uh, here's the water pump. Here's what it looks like. And uh, like I said, I got a Camry. It is a LD with the uh, 2.5, and that's a 2016. So I'm going to be using a Toyota Genuine water pump. I will link water pumps in the description. I'll link a Toyota one and an aftermarket one. Um, you can get whichever one you want. I'd recommend Toyota, of course. And now it's down here underneath the alternator. I'm going to be taking the alternator out, but some people tried to not take it out. And I've seen people be successful, but I'm going to take it out because it just makes a lot more space to get to it. Draw yourself a diagram of the belt. Now we're going to uh, disconnect the battery. Start with the negative side. We have to disconnect the battery if we're going to be removing the alternator. So disconnect the battery and then I'll put this negative clamp in a uh, like a rag or just somewhere away from like the frame or the battery post so it doesn't so it doesn't like kind of move on you and then arc to the body or the uh, the terminal post so just something like that okay so once we got that off let's go ahead and start taking out this alternator um, get the belt off first that's step number one now the tensioner is right here it's a 14 millimeter and uh, what you're going to do is put this on the um, that little 14 millimeter spot, not the bolt, but just like that little solid state spot. And you're going to just gently push it towards the front of the vehicle and that will loosen the belt up enough to where you can kind of get it off of a pulley. If you can get it off one of the smoother pulleys first, that might be easier because the rigid ones or the, the ridge ones or whatever, they, they're like, it's kind of harder to get it off of there. Okay, so I got the belt off. Go ahead and set that to the side. And then I'll go ahead and get this tensioner out. Actually, we'll get the alternator out first. So let's go ahead and uh, unplug these connectors. There's one right here. You just put your thumb and squeeze the little part that has lines. That's kind of where you push. Let's uh, take this cover off right here. This is where the alternator uh, power supply is, or the output. I forget, but it's a 10 millimeter nut. So we'll go ahead and get this off right here. And uh, once you get it kind of loose, you could just use your fingers to get it off the rest of the way. And then this whole thing will just come off like this, like that. Okay, we'll set this to the side. I'm gonna put it on the cow. Now once that's off, there's some connectors down here, the one to the alternator. You could just squeeze the end of it where the little button part is and then just slide it backwards. Try not to lose your patience with these connectors. Here's what I'm talking about, the little button part. Um, yeah, try not to lose your patience with them. Most of them will come off easy. You just got to know how to do it. So if it's giving you a hard time, you might be just not squeezing it right or doing it right. Uh, there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here in between these two little wire harnesses. Go ahead and get this out. Okay, we got that out. Go ahead and just kind of move this to the side so we can get the bolt out. Set this to the side, we'll save that. And then, um, now this will start getting a little free and you and you know you start to be able to kind of move the harness to the side. Uh, there's also a little um, wire harness guide down there that I'm gonna try to remove just to get more room. I'm gonna take this bracket off right here just to move the bracket a little out of the way so then I could have more space. All right, it's my 14 millimeter. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get this bracket. Oh, don't drop that bolt. Don't drop the bolt like I did because it'll disappear on you like my dad. Go ahead and just slide this to the side after we loosen the uh, other bolt. Set this on the cowl right here. Okay, so now we could get to this easier and these these ones right here You just push this tab gently outwards and then you should be able to slide this harness off Almost like effortlessly. So if that's giving you a hard time, you're just not pushing the tab the right way um, We'll get this out of the way and then um, Go and get in here and basically I'm just making room for the alternator to be able to come out again Not every guy likes to take the alternator out. Some guys like to just squeeze to the side and try to get it out um but I'm, I'm taking it out because I've always done it this way. Um, let's see. Let's get down here. Get any of the wire harness off. Any more spots? I think there's like a 10 millimeter bolt down there. Yeah, there's a 10 millimeter. Okay, so got this clear down here. Now I'm uh, going to take this bolt off for the uh, wire harness guide. 
go ahead and get this off. This is going to be in the way for the water pump anyway, so I'm just going to remove it now. All right, got this off. All right, that's a long one. Okay, now we're going to take this uh, 14 off right here. Actually, the uh, 14 I just took out was for the alternator, my bad. That was the bottom alternator bolt I took off, and now this is the top one. Um, this one is long as well. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, get this guy out of here. Okay. Remove this. Alright, now we're going to set this aside. Now you could use a pry bar. You gotta be super careful because you don't want to damage your sensors or anything around, but you can just kind of use your pry bar to just kind of pry on the, um, the, um, like the hard part on this, like the metal part. You don't want to like rely on your pry bar to get this off, but sometimes if you need to just kind of use it just to get this a little loose and try not to drop it like I just did, you don't want to break your alternator, especially in your, your, uh, one that came with the car. They're like 500 bucks. So try to be gentle with your alternator. We're going to go ahead and set this guy aside. And uh, that's how you remove the alternator. Here's the part number if you need a new one. There's a closer look. All right. All right, now the alternator's out the way. So now we have access to our water pump bolts. There's the bracket I was talking about. This is what I thought I was taking off earlier, my bad. Um, so yeah, this is a 10 millimeter for this little wire harness bracket that the little guide part goes on. So we're going to remove this. And uh, you guys can probably see the pink coolant is kind of shooting out a little bit. That's why there's like pink stuff everywhere. It's just the coolant when it comes out of the engine. And then uh, it's a 12 millimeter on the bolts. And then it's pretty much just, I'm just going to slowly and carefully take each one out. Uh, you don't have to be slow, slow, but just like don't try to like, don't try to use like a uh, high torque impact ratchet or something to get these off because you might snap them out at least break them loose by hand and then rat air ratchet them out or electric ratchet them out if you're going to go that route and what you could put your um your new pump aside and then if you want you could put your bolts from the pump that's on the engine and then put them in your new pump in the in the bolt holes that way uh you could just kind of keep track of which ones they go i believe these ones on this engine on this on this specific car are all the same size so with other cars sometimes like one will be like an inch longer or like you know even like a half inch longer or shorter it's really annoying but i believe on this engine these are all the same length so you don't have to worry about it on this one we'll go ahead and uh get this one out now also for the ones on the bottom uh i know some guys have like their special very slick uh, ratchet add-ons and accessories to get to get the bottom bolts uh, on the bottom of the water pump but um i'm gonna actually take the wheel off in a little bit and show you how to get to the ones on the bottom go ahead and take this off right here um as you can see we're starting to get halfway there with the water pump bolts uh the tensioner needs to come off it's the center bolt and then also take note there's like a little uh, bolt right here under the tensioner so that's why the tensioner has to come off but e luckily for us it's really easy it's just one uh, 12 millimeter bolt and it's just right there in the center and then we just go ahead and just get that loose and um, undo it all right and then um, there's also like a little peg on the tensioner and when you go to reinstall it you got to make sure you put the peg the little metal peg like in the hole or else your tensioner is going to be off center and it's going to like pretty much throw your belt so you don't want to do that i'll show you what i mean in a little bit so go ahead and get this bolt out right here okay and then you don't you don't have to pull the whole bolt out you can just take the whole thing out as one and then there's that little peg i was talking about on the bottom there more on that later but now you can see like our water pump you can see it more and uh, you can have more access to about two other bolts there go ahead and get these loose 
and uh this ac hose is going to be like in your way the whole time so but try not to beat up the uh, ac hose in front of you because you don't want it to start leaking or you don't want to like bend that out the way or nothing because you don't want it to leak and rip refrigerant is very hey guys real quick i know it's annoying but if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel that'll help me out a lot i'm trying to reach 100k subs uh, it costs you nothing it's free and it helps me out quite a bit I also got the hookup with Oxido LED lights. They're the brightest, best LED lights in the game right now. Uh, I got a large 15% off promo code at the end of the video, so check that out. And last thing, guys, I also got the hookup to Quantum Soap. It's a men's soap company, made in America, all natural ingredients. Each bar has its own fragrance and manly smell. They even have bars that are extra gritty for mechanics. So check it out. All right, back to the video. Expensive these days. Um, but yeah, so I mean, we're just getting the bolts out at this point. Try not to drop them, and um, you know, hopefully they don't break on you. If if they break on you, I I'm, this isn't that video to deal with that. But as long as you um, kind of go kind of steady with your pace as far as breaking them loose and untake taking them out, you should be fine. So now there's ones on the bottom that are getting harder to reach. So we're gonna. All right, get this guy out. But yeah, the ones on the bottom are getting a little harder to get to, so we're gonna go through the wheel, um, the passenger wheel. I'll show you in just one sec after I get this guy out here. All right, and um, if you have like all kinds of crazy um, accessories for your ratchets and small sockets and stuff, you might be able to get to the small ones, but I don't think so. Um, so I've been saving the bolts. Looks like we got a couple more towards the bottom there. Uh, so I'm going to lift the vehicle up safely and then remove the passenger wheel. That will give us access to the water pump. So i got to take the hubcap off. Just gently find something to gently pry that off. And then it's a 21 millimeter. Go ahead and get the uh, lug nuts off here. And we'll remove the wheel. Okay. And then there's a cover right here. It's two 10 millimeters. And then there's a, a sneaky clip like behind the fender well. I don't know why they put that clip there. I'll show you. Let's get this um, 10 millimeter out right here and right here. And as you can see, like you can kind of pull this down, but there's like a little clip that you have to get over there. And uh, you push the center of it to release it. I don't really know why they did that. It's kind of like, it's whatever. Like push the center piece and it'll unlock it. And usually they break 100% of the time, but this one didn't break, so that was good. And then you could remove the whole panel. And then as you can see, you can get to the bottom of the water pump. Um, all things considered, pretty good. Well, obviously, there's going to be coolant on the ground once we get the bottom bolts out. And, you know, because when you get that last bolt out, you know, it's gonna, a lot of coolant's going to come out. Um, if you have room, you could kind of, like, use a, uh, a wrench and then use, like, an extra wrench on there to get a lot of leverage to get these ones off because some of them even though you have more access to them they're still kind of hard to get on um, I recommend experiment with your different uh, sockets and wrenches see which one can get on there pretty easy and uh, any additional information in the comments is appreciated I am not like the all all say whatever I say is the concrete way to do things I just I've done like probably like 30 or 40 of these and this is just the way I do it now once you get the uh, bolts off the water pump should pop off pretty easy you shouldn't really have to pry on it like that um, make sure you didn't miss a bolt like I just did right there that was uh, all just to show you that you have to take all the bolts off that was not me pretending that was me pretending to take it off with a pry bar I wasn't uh, really doing that all right so we'll take this one out and then once you take your last one out you'll start seeing the coolant seep out and then we're going to just um, you know undo this and uh, yeah, anytime you something's not going right, just double check your work. When you're when you're staring at all these bolts and stuff, sometimes it becomes a blur. All right, so I got that out, and then then this will just pop right off. Um, I gotta get that bolt right there. All right, so pump came off. Now it has uh, blades on it that they're not sharp to cut your fingers, but you don't want them to gouge the engine surface. So be careful when you're taking this out. Here's what it looks like. Coolant's gonna dump out for like, eh, maybe like four minutes. It'll it'll become slower and slower until it stops. Uh, I had a coolant catcher at the bottom, missed it, but whatever. 
Um, so now I'm gonna try to get this harness out the way because it's kind of bothering me. I want it when I put the new one in. I want it to be pretty clear. Uh, there's like a, a 10 millimeter down here. I don't think I'm sh aiming at it right, but there is a 10 millimeter like down here that you could take off, and then it'll remove. It'll make it so the harness can be removed. I got it off. And then this harness was able to move out of the way. So when I put my new pump in, it's not going to be like hitting that or that getting stuck under my new pump. Um, so now we're going to clean the surface of this area. We need to get this clean. When you put your new pump on, it needs to be a f clean surface. Got that wire harness out of the way. Now it's going to have that black gasket on there. Uh, I'm going to link to some brushes. There's like, a, I use a nylon brush and like some brake cleaner and like, um, yeah, that's pretty much it maybe like a rag something like this i try to use this because if i don't want to use like a like a metal on there and scratch it you know i'm not trying to like make any scratches or gouges you want to clean this off really good but you really don't want if you gouge it or something then you're going to have a coolant leak forever so you just want to be patient on this part that stuff's annoying to get off it's not too bad like if you put the work in it'll come off you know it's just annoying because you know at this point you probably want the job done but we're going to just get this stuff off uh don't lose your patience make sure you get it off as much as you possibly can and then when we put the new pump on it'll come with a new gasket and then you won't have to have second thoughts or worry about you know is the new gasket not sealing right because you didn't get all the old gasket off so like i said before all the bolts are the same size so you don't need to worry about like oh shoot that one was like an inch longer uh, take this rubber band off here keep the gasket how it is like this I'm gonna put it down here and I put like uh, I think I had one or two bolts in like this just to kind of hold the gasket in place you don't need to put all the bolts in or nothing just put like one or two that way when you when you go to put the gasket on um, all right let's slide this in here this and um, just kind of line it up sorry guys I know it's not the best uh, angle but uh, basically I got it just lined up I'm trying to make it to where the uh, gasket's not sliding around at all it doesn't really slide around that much but I made I, I, I hand tightened in all the bolts mostly and I just made sure that the gasket was uh, where it's supposed to be on all the bolts and stuff and then basically just gonna tighten everything down um, I'll put torque specs in the description and in the comments, so check for that. But um, you don't want to just tighten one bolt down and then just, just tighten it down and then go around and then start tightening your other bolts. You want to like hand tighten each one, do like a circle, and then go in a uh, like a pattern. Alright, here's the torque. I'll give it to you right now instead. Um, got my torque wrench here. And uh, I'm going to link a torque wrench in the description. And then you set your torque wrench and then basically you just try to get it in here as best you can and you tighten it until you hear it click it'll just go like click and then you know that the bolt is set to the correct torque um, that way you're not you don't over tighten it and snap the bolt that way you don't under tighten it and then it starts leaking uh, it's just the best way to go if you can do it um, now obviously if you're in a bind you don't have a torque wrench i would say get them pretty snug with like a quarter turn extra now here's that little spot I was telling you about on the tension, the little um, peg. You want to get this in. When you go to put this back on, just make sure that little peg spot goes in its hole and then tighten your bolt down. Um, because if you have any of your pulleys off center, as soon as you start your car, you're going to know and, and your, a belt, you know, they don't really pop off and just, and just be able to be okay. And usually they like get damaged or something. So we'll get this on here like that. Get that tight. All right, now let's put our alternator back in. Um, you could use a little seal glide if you want and put it on the, uh, the surface right here. But I'm gonna show you a trick actually that makes it easier to put on. But yeah, some guys like to put this on, but I'm gonna show you a trick where you don't even need to do that. And because when you slide it back on, sometimes it's a little tight and hard to push on. I'm gonna put this guy back on first real quick because this guy goes underneath the alternator. Just tighten that 10 millimeter on right there. Now when you go to put your alternator on, all right, say you're putting it in 
and then you're going to put it on this part and it's just like super tight and you can't get it on or if you do get it on the bolt won't line up right and it's really annoying so you could even get it tight like that on there and then when you go to put your bolt in um, it has a trouble lining up like you'll just spin it and spin it and spin it and spin it and it'll never grab and go in this guy right here so you, you'll put this in and then it just won't work um, I'm going to show you a trick what to do so I'm going to take it out real quick and I'm going to show you how to make it better uh, to go on there real quick alright so before you put it in take your alternator bolt that you took out earlier the long one Right here, this washer, when you tighten this down, it sucks this washer nut in, and that makes it so tight on that mating surface. So what we're going to do is put the bolt in, not all the way, just like, just maybe like, you know, six or seven threads. And then we're going to gently tap on the head of the bolt, and it's going to push that, that washer uh, back outwards. So, so support your alternator with your other hand. I just have a hand on the camera, that's why it looks like this. But you're going to hold it, and then you'll push tap on the... Um, the bolt and it'll push that washer that lock washer out back outwards and then when you go to put this on it'll be like way better like see look at this i can just slide it right over like nothing all right so now when i put this in it gives me a lot more uh free play and i could line it up easier just just like uh that's what you're that's what we do I um, mean, you, you don't have to do that if you don't want to or if you don't have a hammer or something, but that's just a little tip. And then once you get that going, we'll get this tightened. Once you get the bottom bolt in and the top bolt in, like like not all the way down, but hand threaded or like threaded in pretty good, then we could tighten them down all the way like that. Okay, now let's put this connector on right here because we got to put that bracket back on. And now basically it's just everything going back together, guys. So, uh, bef you know, before I put this bracket on, I'm going to put this wire harness guide, slide that guy right back on right there, and then make sure that this is just not in the way of nothing. And I'll put this bracket back on. That was a uh, 14 millimeter. Just tighten these down here. Okay. And it's basically just going to be everything going back together. So we'll start plugging in our, in our connectors. Um, to put the belt back on, um, I kind of still have the, I have the wheel off on the bottom and I kind of use the bottom and the top. This isn't going to be too much info on getting your belt in, but, um, get it basically set up as best you can. Get it around here. Watch out for these little holes or these little pegs sticking out because those will kind of hold your belt stuck. So you can get them in there and then try to uh, do it to where you have your tensioner and then you could slide it on the last pulley over your water pump because your water pump has a smooth pulley and it'll be easiest to slide on um, but yeah I'm gonna do a better uh, belt video later we'll put this on here as best we can like this and then um, what I did is try to just you, you pull the tension off the belt and then once your tension is like your pulley's not putting tension on the belt then that's when you put it on all your pulleys reference that diagram that you drew in the beginning of the video and then if you can get it over the uh, water pump last that'd probably be the easiest but some guys will just do it over the alternator it's just going to be a kind of like a wrestling match you guys are going to have to figure it out um sorry i don't have like the best info on it but i, I just worked the top and the bottom i would like set it over some pulleys on the bottom then i'll do some on the top and then I just made it to where the uh, the tensioner, when I pulled it back, I was able just to uh, get the belt on. Um, try not to have any uh, coolant left on your belt or anything. You could like blow it off or something. Um, oh, and also this bracket, I took the bracket back off and then when I was able to get way more leverage on the tensioner. So like once that was out the way, I was able to pull the tensioner way more forward and then have more space to work for the belt. All right, so once that the belt's on, then we're going to put our electrical stuff back on. Uh, put the alternator right here, the output right here. Uh, make sure those little tabs go into those little slots on that spot. It's a 10 millimeter nut. We'll get that back in place. Plug this guy back in. And if you go to start your car and, like, something's not working, you probably just forgot a connector. Don't panic, you know. Um, and if you hear a little belt noise, like squeaking, that's probably because some coolant got on your belt. Um, 
or your belt could be like off center or something but just don't panic right away unless you hear something crazy and then then turn off your car and see what's going on um yeah it's just basically everything going back together guys so uh this little bracket goes right here on top of the alternator it had that little 10 millimeter bolt that goes right here Alright, we'll get that on right there. We'll slide this wire harness back on. You want to make sure that your wire harness is uh, put back to where it was as best as possible because you don't want to get caught up in your belt hanging loose or nothing like that. Weird stuff happens in cars under the hood when you're on long drives, so just try to get it back as, exactly as much as possible. And then here's that 10 millimeter bolt down there that i had to take off when i was taking the uh when i was going to go put the water pump back in that harness was just bothering me but i got that back in and i got everything out so i'm going to start it up i got my toyota coolant here this is what i highly recommend just getting toyota coolant it's not even that expensive i'll link everything also this funnel right here this is a great tool i'll link this all parts and tools will be linked uh, we'll put our battery terminal back on battery clamp back on the terminal tighten this down uh, this doesn't have to be make it tight. You could break the battery if you do that. Just get it pretty snug. And then we'll start the car. Turn the heater on all the way on defrost and, and full blast because it'll circulate the coolant through the heater core and through the dash. And you won't want to get any air bubbles that are in the engine out. This tool is cool because you could put it on like this. You just kind of match up your coolant cap. And then you could put the funnel in this. And then it will, um, you could just dump coolant in and then it'll just hold the coolant without it leaking. And then you can watch it to see if bubbles come up. So we'll just pour this in until this will just start filling up the, the, the engine and the radiator and stuff. And then you'll see like bubbles like that. Just keep filling it up. And then once you get it like completely like halfway full, you'll start your car. Like I said, put it on heater and, and uh, defrost full blast. And then just let it circulate for like 15 minutes let it run make sure everything's good if something's not right turn off your engine immediately and fix that and then after you after your bubbles are gone for a while then you know you're good and you can put your cat back on and then go for a test drive uh put the side panel back on on the on the side and then put your wheel back on i think it's 80 foot pounds for the uh, lug nuts and uh, that's pretty much it guys so i hope this video helped you out thanks for watching additional information in the comments is appreciated and um you could also squeeze the air or the coolant hose a little bit to get some air out like right here if there's any air trapped right there um but yeah so i hope this video helped you out thanks for watching and um parts and tools will will be linked in the description in the comments also it might be good to wait while you're running the engine and just look under here and make sure your coolant pump's not leaking or nothing and then um that's it so all right guys thanks for watching I'll all right guys that's all the information i got for you the rest of the video is just a couple products and other stuff i got going on totally up to you if you want to stick around i got a 15 percent off promo code for oxido led headlights these are the best headlights in my opinion they just recently upgraded all their technology so their led lights are even brighter than the others that are still using old tech um i've had many led lights uh, as far as like headlights interior lights whatever brake lights and these are the best they don't flicker they're not cheap they don't like go out on you. Um, all you gotta do is go to the Oxido website, type in your vehicle information, then look up what kind of light you want. All their products will pop up. And uh, these are available on Amazon as well, but if you go to the website and use Guillermo Auto in the in the truck, in the discount code spot, you will get 15% off. So if you're looking for new brighter upgrades, check these out. Hey, what's up guys? I wanted to tell you about Quantum Soap. It's a new men's soap company. They got many, many different bars of soap, each with their own ingredients and fragrance and texture. They even have grittier bars for like mechanics or whoever, like the dark matter bar, it's extra gritty. Um, if you go to their website, it's free shipping over $50. Each bar is about $5. You also get a 10% discount code for your first order. Um, they're coming out with many new soaps. It's definitely worth checking out. Of course, I have a discount code for you. It's uh, Guillermo Auto. If you type it in at checkout, you'll get 10% off. You could use it as many times as you want every time you order. These make great gifts to uh, husbands, boyfriends, uncles, nephews. Uh, they even got the Galactic Mechanic Bar. It's super gritty for mechanics, so check that out. Type in the Guillermo Auto promo code. That way they know you're one of the homies. And uh, that's it, guys.